to bribe a government official. Is that what they told you? Mm-hmm. Come and end me. It's time for Carter Norma to go. What you gonna do now, Tariq? Invitations in the mail, though. What's up, Power Fans and YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another Power video. In this video, I'll be talking about the leverage everyone has against the other, Norman's red marriage, how Tariq will kidnap Carter, and the huge leverage Carter has on Tariq. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you're welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, let's get straight into the topics. Episode 9, I believe, is going to be filled with actions based on the trailer that was released. Most of the questions we've been asking will be answered in the next episode. We'll be seeing Kane and Norma's wedding and trust me, it will end up bloody. Now, this marriage will not be the typical white wedding since Norma has always been established to be from Nigeria, which indeed she is a Nigerian in real life for most of you who don't know. On that note, I'm sure we'll be seeing some of her family members, friends, and mostly some African dressing during this ceremony. It is evidence in the teaser here and as we can see, Norma is in what is called gele in Nigeria, which is the headgear she's wearing. Gele means head tie in Yoruba. Gele is a traditional hair tie to Yoruba people of Nigeria, especially the South. The gele comes with specific shapes and designs. Mostly, this is worn during traditional ceremonies like marriage, festivals, etc. And with marriages, the bride ties her head with gele during her traditional marriage. But of late, people wear them at other gatherings, occasions and so forth. So seeing Norma in her gele already established that not only is she from Nigeria, but she is also a Yoruba, which is the second largest tribe in Nigeria with about 21%. Now that's some few details on Norma and clearly from the teaser, the marriage ceremony was done before the crossfire shooting happened. Now at the end of episode 8, we saw Carter and Norma trying to put their forces together to rather take out the middleman which is Tariq and Monet while they both work together directly. After understanding that both of them have common enemies, it's going to be a war between Carter and Norma against Tariq, Monet and Davis. Don't forget the government bribery statement Carter made to Norma alone made Norma knows that Davis is playing both sides. So by default, Davis is part of the war. Now let's look at the main deciding factor of people's fate in the next episode which is leverage. And let's not forget there are certain things that happen without answers and going into episode 9, it's all about surviving and putting family first. Now let's go deeper into leverage and how it can potentially play a key role in decision making in episode 9. Now what leverage does Terry have on Norma? The first one is the pen drive he took from Detective Young. If you ask me, this leverage is a weak one and can be the list of Norma's worries at this moment. Now, the second strong leverage Tariq has on Norma is telling her daughter who killed her father. Now, this used to be a very strong leverage and Norma would have done everything for him not to say anything to her daughter. But after this conversation between Norma and Anya about who her father was, I don't think this leverage Tariq has is strong enough again. Because Anya seemed to be disappointed in her dad now. But let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now, what leverage can Tariq have on Norma to survive this war without getting killed? Tariq will have to kidnap Anya and keep her somewhere and possibly have Braden watch over her in case of anything. If Norma knows her daughter is not safe, there might be a life for a life treat for Tariq to survive. Now, before I move on to Carter's leverage on Tariq, let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now, let's talk about the possible leverage Carter has on Tariq. Carter doesn't only have leverage on Tariq but also Monet. He became part of the killers of Felicia the moment he went to the house to help Diana. Now, this leverage will be somehow hard for Carter to use since he had already staged her death as an accident, hence he will equally implicate himself if he tools that out. Now, the second strongest leverage Carter has on Tariq is the footage of him killing Zion. This leverage is a strong leverage because Tariq doesn't even know it exists. So this will come as a shock for him should Carter reveal this information to Tariq. Now, the third strongest leverage Carter can have on Tariq is Tasha. He was the one who even made Tariq aware that Tasha was going to be out of which sec. This equally means that once Carter can have such information on Tasha, he can equally know her whereabouts. And we all know Tasha and Yaz are Tariq's greatest weak point. It could be the reason Carter seemed to be confident in this scene where it looks as though he has been kidnapped. And I'll come to this later, but let me know what you also think in the comments section so far. Now, when it comes to Norma, she is very limited when it comes to having leverage on anyone. Her only leverage I can think of is the fact that Tariq killed Detective Young. Apart from that, I doubt if Norma has any debt on Tariq or Monet, but let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now let's look at the teaser highlights. 
In the beginning, we see Tariq with a gun fixing a silencer on it. And this scene is in the same church Carter normally goes to do his confessions. So the only way this can happen is when they ambush the priest, lock him in some room for Tariq to sit in his place waiting for Carter. Now, there could be possibilities that there are multiple confession booths and Carter entered a different one from where Tariq was sitting. Also, the idea was for Tariq to kill him, but it could be possible that for some reason, he said something to Tariq about possibly Tasha and Carter is the only one who knows where she is. This would be one of the main reasons why Tariq didn't pop Carter in the church, but rather took him to a warehouse to torture him to confess where Tasha is. And like I said early on, Tasha is one huge weak link to Tariq. So if my theory happens to be accurate, then it means Carter has another reason to survive because if he kidnaps Tasha indeed, only him can show Tariq the place. Maybe that is why we heard Carter saying confidently that, what are you going to do now, Tariq? Fuck you gonna do now, Tariq? Now, this statement is a negotiation type of statement to make. But let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now, we also see Davis with a gun and we all know that he's somehow part of the war. Taking Carter out will not be easy and will need a collaborative effort to do that. Davis, I know, will play a role, so will Monet to take Carter out. Now, we see a more interesting scene here where Tariq is pouring fuel or gas, as you may call it, on a G-Wagon and we all know it's only Monet who uses that car. And I won't be quick to say that it was a war against Monet, but rather, I think it's a big plan and Monet knows about it. Now, my theory for why Tariq is pouring fuel on Monet's car is this. First off, the purpose for this is to blast the car to look like an accident or some explosion. Now, we all know Kane and Drew are on the same two sides that are fighting against their mother. And Monet has tried all she can to make both Drew and Kane understand that family first and to no avail, right? How about this plan is to burn Monet's car and fake an attempt on her so that her two sons will wake up from their slumber. Don't forget, Tariq helped Tommy with car explosion to escape from the police as well. Now, despite their differences, we all know Kane and Drew do not wish their mother dead. Else, Kane would have told Norma long ago about the fact that his mother robbed her product. So, exploding Monet's car can be a make-believe that will make Kane and Drew's mind come home. Maybe that is why we see Kane in a distressed mood like this, as if they just informed him that his mother was nearly bent to ashes. I remember this similar look of Kane when Monet asked him to kill Lorenzo and he was with Tariq in his dorm to brief him about the implementation plan. But let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now, if you look closely, a car that looks like David's car was leaving the scene so it could be that Monet brought her G-Wagon there and joined Davis' car while Tariq poured fuel on it. But let me know what you also think in the comment section about this particular scene below. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, share. Most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.